Most people see Goldman Sachs as an investment bank, and it is, having underwritten thousands of IPOs and debt placements over the past hundred years. But almost 80% of Goldman's net revenue in 2019 came from sources other than investment banking. Goldman is actually divided into four business segments, investment banking, global markets, asset management, and consumer and wealth management. Now, Goldman's investment banking segment does what you might expect. It helps companies raise money through equity and debt issuances. Equity issuances can be a company's initial public offering or IPO or a seasoned offering. Debt issuances can take a variety of forms, ranging from handling an organization's bond issuance to designing asset-backed securities to securing a bridge loan to finance an acquisition. But the investment banking segment also provides consulting for mergers, acquisitions, divestitures, restructurings, and spinoffs. The investment banking division even makes loans to clients with whom Goldman has close ties. But remember, investment banking was responsible for just 20% of Goldman's net revenues in 2019. The segment that's responsible for more Goldman's net revenue than any other division is actually global markets. In this division, Goldman acts as a market maker. It executes transactions for clients, connecting them with the buyer or seller for their transaction. And Goldman also takes the other side of a transaction if a buyer or seller is not readily available. These transactions could be for fixed income securities, equities, currencies, or commodities. For example, Goldman might help a client find someone buy its mortgage-backed securities, help an airline reduce its risk by setting up a jet fuel hedge, or help a hedge fund set up a short sale. Clients can also access Goldman's investment research or execute trades through Goldman's technology platform, Marquee. Goldman refers to Marquee as its, quote, digital storefront, and it saves the company a lot of money. Since clients have their needs met online, it don't need to, act to talk to an actual person at Goldman. It's like online banking for Goldman's clients. The trading strategies that clients find on Marquee come from Goldman's Global Investment Research Group, which provides research on industries, currencies, commodities, and 3,000 companies around the world. Now, the global market segment gets commissions and or fees on the transactions that it executes, resulting in almost $15 billion in net revenue in 2019. This was nearly double the net revenue of Goldman's investment banking segment for that same year. So we've talked about investment banking and we've talked about global markets, but Goldman's third business segment is asset management. This segment was responsible for roughly $9 billion of Goldman's net revenue in 2019, which was about 25% of the company's total net revenue. This segment manages the investments of large institutional investors. As you might expect, Goldman helps clients manage equity and fixed income investments. But it also helps clients manage alternative investments, which range from investments in hedge funds to real estate to private equity. Goldman helps clients set up mutual funds, partnerships, and other investment structures. For example, a client might approach Goldman about setting up a joint venture with another company that does business in a foreign country. Alternatively, a pension fund might approach Goldman for advice about how to allocate its portfolio. In some cases, Goldman even provides financing to its clients. Now, the majority of revenue Goldman receives from this segment comes from management fees, but it also receives incentive fees. For example, if Goldman puts a client into an investment fund, Goldman might receive a percentage of the fund's return. Now, Goldman's fourth and final segment is the one responsible for the least amount of Goldman's net revenue, and it's called consumer and wealth management. Goldman historically hasn't targeted individual consumers, and it's focused more on serving companies and large institutions. But in 2016, it launched an online bank called Marcus. Through Marcus, individuals can set up a savings account and get loans. In 2019, Goldman committed itself even further to consumer banking when it agreed to sponsor Apple's new credit card. But those aren't the only things the consumer and wealth management segment does. It also provides wealth advisory services to clients, and it manages companies' financial wellness programs through its subsidiary, the ACO Company. While Goldman's been investing a lot of money in this segment, it accounted for just 14% of Goldman's net revenue in 2019. So these are Goldman's four segments. As you can see, Goldman does a lot more than investment banking. Comparing the different segments, we see that the global market segment generated nearly three times the revenue of the consumer and wealth management segment. And consumer and wealth management was responsible for just 2.2% of Goldman's pre-tax profit in 2019. 
Consumer and wealth management also has the lowest profit margin of the segments, and it's been getting worse over time. This is clearly Goldman's weakest segment, but Goldman believes consumer banking is going to be a big part of the future. So it'll be interesting to see if these investments pay off 10 to 15 years down the road. For right now, the investment banking segment is generating the highest return on common equity. So we've talked about how Goldman generates revenue, but we can also think about where Goldman generates revenue. At the end of 2019, Goldman had offices in 30 countries around the world, but 60% of its revenue came from the Americas, primarily the United States. It's surprising that just 13% of Goldman's net revenue came from Asia in 2019, given the massive size of the economies in China and Japan. And Goldman's year-over-year growth has been slowest in Asia, so it doesn't seem like Asia is going to be a bigger part of the picture anytime soon. For right now, at least, Goldman is a company that is driven primarily by its performance in the United States. But what do you think? Will Goldman expand its presence in Asia? Or was it a good idea for Goldman to get into consumer banking? I look forward to reading your comments below.